What's going on everybody, C4 here, welcome back to the channel and today's Madden 20 rebuild We're going to be taking a look at a team that has taken the AFC by fire over the last couple weeks And that is the Tennessee Titans and what has spiked this engulfing flame destruction black fire Like look at their logo, see the flames coming off it? That is the, because of Ryan Dano that, that, that regular Tennessee Titan logo is just a circle with a T Ever since Ryan Tannehill's become a star, those flames coming off it have never burned hotter. So here's going to be, you know, it's going to be an interesting rebuild because he is kind of old, to be honest with you. He doesn't have any dev traits. And you might say, where's Marcus Mariota? You guys are going to see that in just one second, what happened with him. And uh, actually another player on the defensive side. But this is going to be the Ryan Tannehill rebuild. He's 31, 79 overall. I mean, he's always been a solid quarterback in Madden. Because he can run. He's always been a scrambler. You know, converted wide receiver from Texas A&M. Smoke show of a wife. Got a face scan too. But I I'm kind of hoping that we can, you know, it's a five-year rebuild. If we can even get three years of Ryan Tano playing at a, at a decently high level and hand the ball to Derrick Henry, uh, I think we should have some success. I mean, look at the rest of this roster. Let's get out of this. Let's go to the actual uh, team roster here. So we got Tano at quarterback. We'll see what happens with Marcus Mariota in a second. At running back, we have Derrick Henry as our starter. He's a beast, man. One of the best running backs in the NFL, 88. I'm surprised he doesn't have a superstar. Like, they did give him, like, the big power back one. Like, they give undeserving quarterbacks a superstar X-Factor. They give him, like, the scrambling abilities. I feel like you should just... I don't necessarily agree that Derrick Henry should be a superstar X-Factor, but I definitely think he should have some... He should have some power back abilities here. But, anyways, he's 25, 88. That looks great. Uh, Deion Lewis, for the time being, as, a, as an RB2 kind of fits in. We have Corey Davis. Give me interest to see if we can grow and develop him into a legitimate wide receiver. I think he's really, really talented. It's just, even with Tannehill, it's just an awkward offense, man. But Corey Davis and A.J. Brown, uh, I do think that the sky is going to be fairly high for those two to be our premier wide receivers for this week. Well, you got Humphreys in the slot. He's also 26. We could probably make that work. Uh, tight end, they got Delaney Walker near the end of his career. John o. Smith. Does he have a dev trade? He does. 76 star, so... I assume Delaney probably retires after this year. And then we'll be have John o. Smith should be uh, our tight end for this rebuild. You look at the offensive line. Solid O-line. The ages are not ideal. Taylor Luan is good at 82. Shout out Bustin with the boys. But he's also 28. So for a five-year rebuild, you know, you want to see guys that are like 28, 29, 30 to be like mid-80s. The fact that he's low 80s has me a little bit concerned. Saffold's solid for the time being. Very expensive. And his rating has dipped. He had a higher rating with the Rams. Ben Jones. I mean, it's, it's an okay offensive line. Conklin should be here for the remainder of the rebuild. He's a, he's a nice spot at right tackle there. But the rest of this O-line, I don't know. I have questions. I have concerns. You flip to the defense. They got Jeff Simmons. Who looked like an exceptional pick. He's only been playing for, what, three weeks? And he's, he's you know, turned that defense from a, from a solid defense into maybe a good defense. He is that impactful of a playmaker. Uh, so he's at one defensive end side. They got the veteran Jarrell Casey on the other. Inside, Daquan Jones, 78, but he's 27. I mean, this is a roster that has some little tweakings that's going to go on. You got Cam Wake. He's nice for one year. But who's going to be able to take it? It's going to be DeAndre Walker, the rookie to Georgia. Is he going to be able to... Um, I don't think he definitely doesn't have a depth trade, no. But, you know, we got to figure that out. Inside looks pretty good between Jayon Brown and Rashawn Evans. Those should be our two middle linebackers. Right outside linebacker, Harold Landry. That looks fine. So, really, only one linebacker away from having a complete rebuild linebacking core in the secondary logan ryan and adore jackson are our corner one and two a little bit worried about him being 28 but it is what it is uh and you may see a certain player trayvon mullen here again we should just get to the trade uh there's no malcolm butler but we do have a trayvon mullen free safety kevin byard maybe the best ball hawking safety in the nfl it just seems like he gets like five picks automatically every single year vaccaro at strong safety he's solid for the time being special teams we don't have uh, suck up and Kern. Kern's one of the best punters in the NFL. Well, let's get to this trade and then let's get into this rebuild. So as we, you know, we broke down the roster, we're able to make a trade right off the rip. We're going to send Marcus Mariota, because this is going to be the Ryan Tannehill rebuild, Tajay Sharp and Malcolm Butler to the Oakland Raiders for one of their two first round picks and corner Trayvon Mullen, who actually thinks a rookie. Usually it's pretty damn difficult to trade for rookies, but they desperately wanted these players. And uh, who am I to say, hey, don't give me your first round pick, or at least one of your first round picks. Coming up from our week 11 bye, we're seven and three. The Ryan Tannehill era. If he would have started day one, they would have got moved on from Marcus Rowe to send him to the Raiders or whatever. This could have been the Tennessee Titans. They could have been you know, from start 
one of the best teams in the AFC Conference. Seven and three. Quick look. Is Tano playing well? I'll take that. 14th in yards, 13th in touchdowns. Sure. Run for his team. Sure. Look at that contracts right out the rip here. We got Derrick Henry, franchise player. As much of a franchise player as you can get. We'll hold on to it until he's 30. Oh, he wants more money. Uh, Tannehill. Oh, my God. Two years, 48 some million dollars. We got it. It's the whole reason why we're doing this rebuild. Jack Conklin, give you a four year deal. Um, who else needs to get paid? Ben Jones, replaceable. Logan Ryan, he's 28, only a one year deal. Kind of makes things a little more difficult for free agency, but we should be able to re sign Derrick Henry and have enough money to get one key free agent. So that's kind of nice. So we're right at the end of the year. I just want to show you what the, the last two weeks we put up 57 against the Saints, 52 against the Houston Texans. This week, Tannehill had five touchdowns, six total touchdowns. That's insanity, as I, I'm assuming we're going to make our way here into the playoffs, which we do, clearly. Uh, is Ryan Tannehill amazing? He probably is amazing. We're an 84 overall squad across the board. AFC champs, 12 and 4. Looking at the QB, Tannehill, second in passing yards, fourth in touchdowns, 41. That is going to be a dev trade upgrade for him. I mean, he's already sitting at normal, so that will be good for him to get up at least to a star, which should help. But what? These numbers? What? Little John? Throw that in there. Derrick Henry, who actually said he wants to test a free agency, which to me means you're playing on a franchise tag. Uh, 1,100 yards, 13 touchdowns. Lewis was nice. Five touchdowns. So Tannehill finished with 47, 48, 49, 4,900 yards, and 46 touchdowns. That might be MVP. We might have a Ryan Tannehill MVP scenario. Corey Davis, 94 catches, 1,300 yards, 11 touchdowns. 1,100 yards, 6 touchdowns for AJ Brown. Almost 1,000 yards and 7 touchdowns for John Smith. Humphreys had 9. Deion Lewis had 5. Awesome. Defensively, 123 tackles for Jayon Brown. Eight TFLs, three sacks. We got 12 and a half sacks, Jarrell Casey. Five interceptions of Dore Jackson. Three from Rashawn Evans. One, so definitely want to see. There's the one disappointment. I would like to see Bayard uh, maintain. Like, what is he averaging for his picks? I find that hard to believe that he just had eight. La and they don't have his 2018 stats. So that's. Okay. MVP. Ryan Tannehill, year one. Ryan Tannehill in this. He's a sim god, I guess. League MVP, year one is Ryan Tannehill. Like I, I, you know what? Honestly, I'm just thinking about this first time. Well, how many times have you guys seen Marcus Mariota in your franchise modes win MVP? Like Mariota and Trubisky are the two like, what are they doing here? Type guys, and I, you know, sure, I, I guess so. Hell yeah. Coach of the Year, Mike Vrabel. Offensive Player of the Year, Tannehill, runner-up. Defensive Player of the Year with the Dante Hightower. Brown and Evans, 9 and 10. Offensive Rookie of the Year, A.J. Brown was number two. Defensive Rookie of the Year with the Drew Tranquil. Jeffrey Simmons at eight. Best QB. Okay, come on. Give Tannehill some more awards here. We only can go up one. I actually think that's also pretty dumb that in a Madden franchise mode, you can only go up one dev trait regardless. Because now we're going to have... Like, I... Hmm... Like, I personally feel like I should be allowed to make him a superstar. I think if you win MVP, you should be superstar automatically. But anyways, Derek Henry running back two for wide receiver. Jameson Crowder, Corey Davis was a runner up there. A lot of runners up, which kind of annoying because, you know, those are almost automatic dev traits. But we're 12 and four. We have a first round bye. And in the divisional, ooh, 12 and four, 12 and four. Titans and Patriots. We are the home team. Let's see. Come on. Don't be one and done. Come on. And we knock off the Patriots. 28 to 14. Let's see this. How does this actually happen? Is it Tannehill just being a god? Four touchdowns for Ryan Tannehill. <laughs> what is going on? Corey Davis. AJ, oh my. Mm. This, is, this is a magical year. Now we got the 12 and 4 Browns. How do we feel about this matchup? Can can they stop Tannehill? And they can't. They can't stop Tannehill. 
Harold Landry had two sacks. We beat them 31 to 28. And we're in. This is stupid. This is so dumb. We are in the Super Bowl. 31 28. Ryan Tannehill has seven touchdowns to two picks throughout this playoff stretch. What is? What are we seeing? What are we seeing right before our very? Like, I, I feel like I have to play the Super Bowl, right? Maybe I, maybe I shouldn't, because the Sim is doing the damn job. But I feel like I have to play. This is like a miracle run that you could only dream of. Like once you've already built up your favorite team, your rebuild team. We're getting it in year one with an MVP Ryan Tannehill. Like this is the most obscure, ridiculous rebuild. I'm going in because we're not, we're not not winning a Super Bowl for especially how many of these rebuilds have been failures like not super bowl winning rebuilds i need this so we're hopping in against the 10-6 saints Tannehill is leading this titans team to their first ever super bowl opening drive in the super bowl can't blame you for doing a little slant cheese if i have to jay who's that aj brown the rookie who's having an unbelievable season catches nice little Okay, there's just a 98-yard bomb. Sick. Derrick Henry, Red Zone. Oh, my God. They can't even... This Saints defense is pathetic. They're not even getting bodies over there. Oh, we fall in the end zone. A.J. Brown holds on to it as the Saints are making this game really, really tight. They missed an extra point, but that will put us up 28-20. to 20. Hopefully, we can hold that lead into the halftime. The Sim do its thing. This is a high scoring Super Bowl. Oh, we can't skip that. 44 33. Easily one of the most ridiculous single seasons I've seen in a rebuild. Maybe ever. Not just Madden 20. Maybe ever. I came into this thinking, like, that could be an interesting rebuild. Let's do the Tennessee Titans with Ryan Tannehill. Tannehill's looking pretty damn good. I mean, former first round quarterback. Maybe he's finally in a system. That weird, ugly. Not very neutral, friendly, watching Tennessee Titan offense. And maybe Tannehill finally is in his setting, right? And, I, and I'm, I'm, I have Ryan Tannehill in both of my fantasy leagues in the opening round of the playoffs this week. So tomorrow, I need him to come through. Maybe this is somewhere, some way of me trying to you know, justify him being my starting quarterback in fantasy football. I don't know. But he got the MVP, 40-some touchdowns, dominated here, probably got the Super Bowl MVP. That was terrible defense from the Saints. So even though they, they they were still in it, they still about 33 points. I don't think they made like one tackle anytime we got behind them. Ryan Tannehill. So I had two of those touchdowns. 460 of the yards, four touchdowns, no interceptions. He may just be the glitchiest. And this coming out the rebuild we did with the Broncos, where Drew Locke in his rookie year had like 36, 37 touchdowns. And I thought that was ridiculous. I thought that was insane. I thought that made literally no sense. This takes the cake. I know, you know, Mariota and company is always a perennial MVP in the Titans offense, but I did not think we would see these results. Ryan Tannehill, year one, hoisting that Lombardi trophy. Can Ryan Tannehill make the Tennessee Titans into a dynasty? We got four more years to find out. Draft recap time from year one. We had those two first rounders. From so the first round, we got Christian Fulton, corner from LSU 73 with a hidden dev trait. Looks really, really good. He should be at least an upgrade over Trayvon Mullen. And then in the uh, second first round pick, we got Xavier McKinney, 69 overall. Overall's not great, but he does have a hidden dev trait. We need to find Kenny Vaccaro's replacement as he has already regressed, I think, two points. He's 29. So getting someone like McKinney, we could probably thrust him to the starting position sooner than later. We got Bryce Hall here, another talented playmaker, corner from Virginia, 70 overall normal. Uh, Laurel Murchison, D tackle. He's more so going to be a D end in our scheme, 67. We got Muti, who's a 54. We got Anthony Gordon, the quarterback from Washington State. Thought we might get a little Gardner Minshew love and support here, but only a 57 overall. And then finish up with a Brady Ross fullback selection. For free agency, you didn't see any because we had no money, but I did franchise tag Derrick Henry. I think it's like eight mil per year. Year two, trying to have anything similar to what we had last year. We're an 82 overall. We were down two points. Ryan Tannehill's up to an 82 star dev quarterback, 32 year old, coming off the old MVP, 
Got a star dev. Still had 12 regression. Yes. You know, we knew what we are getting into. We got Derrick Henry on the tag. Corey Davis up to a superstar, which is nice. Uh, I don't think any other dev trade changes on the offense when you flip to the defense. I don't think there's any dev trade changes either. By was Byron always a superstar? I think he was. So, uh, yeah, we got Christian Fulton. We're going to make him our corner three. Offense looks good. Defense looks sound. Oh, so how about the development of Walker? Went from like a 68 normal finishing up and starting year two with a 79 star. So that's pretty good. But look at the O-line. We do need to... Uh, we do not have a center. Or really a, a solid guard. Okay, good luck. Good luck, Tannehill. Coming up from the bye here in year two. Two and five bottom dwellers in the AFC South. But luckily... No one's really off to a hot start, so we can finish out strong. We could still get a second AFC South title. Contracts, we have Derrick Henry playing on the franchise tag. Again, another year that we really want to maintain him, so we do. We get him locked down. We have Adore Jackson, five years, 68 mil. Sure, Corey Davis, now a superstar playmaker. Four years, 50 mil. Okay, he wants a little bit more money. That's fine. That's totally doable. We got Jayon Brown, five-year deal. Fairly affordable for a linebacker. John Lewis Smith has emerged as a very nice tight end. The the great successor to Delaney Walker. Um, even only a one year for Daquan Jones is not terrible if he'll take that. So yeah, we'll come back, we'll, we'll extend Jonu Smith. We'll extend Corey Davis, Logan Ryan. I mean, even that, that's a lot of money though for a one year deal. We're gonna wait and see. Maybe we can get someone a little bit younger in free agency, but uh, definitely Corey Davis and Jonu Smith, we'll extend. And then to follow it up at the end of year two, didn't even make the playoffs. Corey Davis wants to go to free agency, so we're at the franchise tag him. I don't know. Six of, the magic did I don't know if the magic ran or not, but I'm 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 telling you right now, we'll be thinking of looking at quarterbacks in the draft. Tato still played well though. 3,800 yards, 32 touchdowns, 12 picks. That's still like that's the kind of year that if even if he had that last year, I'd be like, okay, Tannehill's kind of cheesy. But just not quite the MVP caliber season. Derrick Henry didn't even break 1,000 yards. Uh, A.J. Brown had a big year. 82 catches, 1,100 yards, 12 tutties. Davis was fine. Uh, defensively, Jayon Brown, 118 tackles, 2 interceptions. We have no sacks. Picks look good. Adore Jackson, we extended him. Um, but definitely want to see better out of just everyone, especially the offense. Tom Brady somehow wins MVP. It's 79 years old. Let's get into year three. So for free agency, about time we uh, we spent a little bit of money. So Cheeto Bawuzie, former corner of the Dallas Cowboys, bring him in, pair him with, uh, with uh, Dore Jackson with Christian Fulton. That's you know we're we're set for the next three years of the rebuild. So draft recap after landing Awuzie in free agency, pretty much just try to hit on all our spots. First up, we got in my opinion maybe the second coming of Aaron Donald from Pitt, Jalen Twyman. Twyman Twyman sounds a lot better. Uh, I've heard it pronounced both ways, but it's definitely Twyman. 75, hidden dev. He's going to be your Jarrell Casey replacement, 100%. Second round, we got our quarterback just in case it didn't work out. Tanner Morgan, you know, really, really talented looking guy. Gunslinger from Minnesota, 68, hidden dev trait. Maybe could be groomed to be Tanner's replacement in case things don't work out. We got Puka Williams in the third round, 68, hidden dev trait, taking over for... Uh, Dion Lewis as our nice little compliment to Derrick Henry. We got 62 Dalton Keene from Virginia Tech. Ventrell Miller, 66 linebacker from Florida. We got Tommy Townsend, punter from Florida. And Smith, the kicker from Syracuse. Just trying to get a little bit cheaper on special teams as the special teams unit for the Titans. Are, I think maybe the most expensive in the NFL. Year three, trying to, maybe it's going to be like a one-off, one-on, you know, kind of thing. Like, this is our year. We're due. We're at 85 overall team, 84 offense, 87 defense. You are the quarterback room. We got Tannehill, regressed two points. No, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm worried about it, but it is what it is. Derrick Henry almost a 90. We got uh, Corey Davis, 89, superstar playing on the franchise tag. A.J. Brown, 89, superstar. We got John o. Smith, 86, superstar. Like We are slowly building a really solid team here around Tannehill, around maybe potentially Tanner Morgan who could finish out this rebuild as our starting quarterback. Offensive line, better than what it was last year. You look at the defense, uh, we have Jarrell Casey still, man in the front three. Uh, we brought in Chidobo Wujie in the secondary to pair with 
Adore Jackson and Christian Fulton. Byers 94 superstar. Linebackers look like absolute money. Xavier McKinney gets to start at strong safety after being a second round pick last year out of Alabama. And I think honestly, honestly, I feel like this team's probably like eight and eight, but we could sneak into the playoffs. I thought this team wasn't really that good year one where we won it all. So let's go here year three. Out of the bye, year three, a little bit better. Four and three, tied for first in the AFC South. Tannehill slanging it fourth in yards, six in touchdowns. Why? I mean, we already know what he brings to the table. Looking at contracts here, Corey Davis playing on the franchise tag. Definitely want to get him to a long-term extension. Keep him until he's 30. Got him locked up. Harold Landry, he's been solid, even though I've never had a 3-4 defense play well in a sim. Uh, these guys are really good players, and we just we clearly can't let them walk. Uh, ooh. Well, we'll see what happens with Landry and Evans, and then we'll decide from there where to go with Ryan Tannehill. And at the end of year three, we made the playoffs 11-5. and five. Unfortunately, not another AFC South title that we could add, even though we only have one, but we have one Super Bowl too. Uh, looking at the stats here, we were able to extend Ryan Tannehill on a one-year deal. Man, he deserves it. He is just insane. 4,300 yards, 40 touchdowns yet again. Let's look at the three-year span that he has been here in Tennessee. His best year to this point was probably 2014, where he went over 4,000 yards, 27 touchdowns. So since he's been in Tennessee, we got 41 and 11, 32 and 12, 40 and 10, which is just, oh, it's, that's scary. Derrick Henry over 1,000 yards, 10 touchdowns. Uh, receiving, we got 81 catches, 1,100 yards, 10 teddies for AJ Brown, almost 1,007 for Jonu. Definitely want to see Corey Davis play a little bit better. Uh, Derrick Henry getting a lot more involved in the receiving game. Rashawn Evans, 120 tackles, 9 TFLs, 7 sacks, and interception. He got a dev trade scenario, went from star to superstar. Uh, really, really good. Jarrell Casey, 8.5 sacks. Where's Twyman? Twyman, Twyman only a sack. That's not that great. 4 sacks, uh, 4 picks, sorry. Chidoba Wuzier, that's good money spent in free agency. Yearly awards, MVP went to Lamar Jackson with Tannehill coming in at number 7. AFC Elements Player of the Year, Lamar, uh, Lamar Jackson, Tannehill at 5. Defense Player of the Year went to Devin Bush. Rashawn Evans at 6. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Puka Williams at 3. Defensive Rookie of the Year, Twyman at 4. Uh, QB, I don't think we have any individual award winners, which we unfortunately did not. But yet again, it's time to kick the Patriots' butt, hopefully here, in Year 3 of the Titans' rebuild. Oh, we're one and done. Ugh. And we go one and done, losing 28 to 24 the makeup of that loss who, who didn't play well who didn't pull their weight Tannehill was fine he wasn't fine on all cylinders though no turnovers Derrick Henry had a huge game 150 yards pretty much in two tutties defensively we got a couple sacks here no turnovers they just edged us out looking at this um yeah they they squeaked it out it's getting year four all right I'm not one against Tanner Morgan, but the fact that this is no combine, he's from Florida, those skills look great. I'm just gonna, we, and, you know, we, we have no needs. Might as well just see what this guy can bring to the quarterback room. Jalen Slade out of Florida, 78 hidden dev trait, number two in true talent, 95 throw power. Mother of God, what a prospect. Usually don't like the brag with the cheesy O line picks, but when you get a guy that's number 25, with like the last, I know, what's that, probably six pick in the draft. Money. So here's a look at our draft recap. You saw the freaky quarterback Jalen Slade out of Florida. We follow it up. We got Jermaine Finney, 71 from Tennessee. In the third round, we got a decent safety here. Jacoby Staley from Utah, 70. Uh, Thomas, 68. We got a 69 tackle. One fool's gold, Sammy Sam. Should have known by the name. Sounds stupid. Uh, we kind of whiffed on that one, but there we go. Number 25 in true talent. We got him with pick 25 of the seventh round. Nice. Year four, and even though everything kind of goes in the direction of not playing Tannehill, play Slade. Tannehill's not done anything yet for me to worry. Like right now, we have Slade as our ace in the hole for our quarterback next year, for year five, if we want to try to win that second Super Bowl. Right now, man, we got to keep rocking and rolling with Tannehill, who's now a superstar dev player. He's a freak, inside dead eye. He got the superstar dev there. Uh, Super Bowl week for being another slinger. Uh, AJ Brown's up to a superstar X factor. His ability, you got uh, first one free. He would have got that Super Bowl week, which he did, yeah, because he's really, really good. Uh, offense pretty much stays the same. We signed one uh, free agent here, Bradley Boozman. 
Bozeman, the guard from Alabama, and formerly, I think he's on Baltimore. But he's a nice little pickup there to solidify this O-line. Kind of surprised Derrick Henry's not going to dev trade. He doesn't play nearly as well as I thought. Uh, defensively, Jalen Twyman up to a superstar. He drafted. He was straight up out the gate a superstar player, which is good. And he's actually fitting in there as an undersized nose tackle. Rashawn Evans, superstar. No other change. We'd definitely like to see someone else between Harold Landry, Walker, McKinney, Awuja, Adore Jackson get to an X-Factor. But it's fine, man. This is a really, really good team. Let's hope Ryan Tannehill goes off for no reason whatsoever. He shouldn't be this good here in year four and gets us another playoff run. That way through year four, I didn't hope we'd have to make the decision. We're three and four bottom dwellers in the south. And I was like, all right, well, what's Tannehill looking like? 18th in yards, 22nd in touchdowns. It's that it's that token down year. So here in year four, we're going to make the change. We're going to put uh, Slade in here at quarterback, Jalen Slade. 97 throw power at this point. This guy's just insane, man. I, I don't know if he's going to be able to salvage the year. It might be too far. But Tannehill gave us three years. Tannehill gave us a Super Bowl. This is still the Tannehill rebuild. But uh, when you get someone like that, you kind of need to get ready to move on. So A.J. Brown, we got him signed up. We're going to want Jeff Simmons. We can even give that a five-year deal. Get that under $10 million cap hit. Let's we'll come back for him. DeAndre Walker, give you a five-year deal. He's developed very, very nicely. Uh, for Jarrell Case, we don't really have his replacement. So, you know, any of these guys that we don't have depth, we definitely want to try and re-sign. So we got Nate Davis. Might have to be the end of Tannehill. I will try to come back for both Jeff Simmons and Jarrell Casey. But, it, you know, we made it four years with Tannehill. I think that's pretty impressive within itself. And the QB change salvaged the season. Still not an overly impressive record at 9-7. and seven, But enough to get into the wild card. Second place in the AFC South. We got Lamar Jack. I mean, the Ravens record's not even that much better. Uh, technically one less loss. So Jalen Slade came in, played the final, I don't even know what it was, eight games, 18 touchdowns. I mean, Tannehill wasn't even playing bad. It just it just wasn't efficient enough. So Slade came in. If you combine them, I'll take that as a season. Uh, running the ball, Derrick Henry was fine. Uh, receiving A.J. Brown's a phenom. 81 catches, 1,200 yards, 15 touchdowns. Uh, some you know, underwhelming years from everyone else. Jayon Brown, real good year. 123 tackles, 10 sacks. Uh, 10 sacks, Harold Landry, 8.5, Jarrell Casey, 5 from Simmons, 5 interceptions, Adore Jackson. You look at the yearly awards, MVP went to Andrew Luck. What about Offensive Player of the Year, Deshaun Watson, defense, Jayon Brown, beautiful. I think he's still on a normal dev, so that'd be nice to get him up at least into a star. Offensive Rookie of the Year went to Jalen Slade. You know, we can only wonder how much more one side that would have been if he was our starter year uh, day one. Uh, Vernon Thomas, we got a couple guys there on the defense. As far as individual warrants, Jayon Brown, your best linebacker. So we know we're getting a dev trade there. But can Slade, the young rookie quarterback out of Florida, lead us past Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens? And he does 34 to 16. I mean, we got a healthy QB room. We probably might actually be able to trade uh, Morgan away. But for right now, Slade, 34 points put up, two touchdowns, no turnovers. Defense got three picks. On Lamar Jackson, so we're probably going to be looking at the game ball here. Someone on the defense. Jadoba Wujie, two interceptions. Christian Fulton with one as the Tennessee Titans getting ready to run the gauntlet. Go all the way. And, oh, it's the Chargers. And we knocked out the Chargers 31 to 28. The number one team you never, ever, 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 ever in a sim want to see in the playoffs. The Chargers, they are no match for our Titans squad. Three touchdowns, no picks, Jalen Slade. Let's go. A.J. Brown looking good. Got a sack. We got a pick from Idore Jackson. And we are now a game away from featuring in our second Super Bowl. And we get to find out who the best team is here in 2022 in the AFC South. Colts, Titans, Super Bowl on the line. Jalen Slade. Oh, just falls a little bit short. Marlon Mack. Yeah, that's a pretty good game. That's a pretty good game out of Marlon Mack as we fall 35 to 14. Getting a look here at uh, that loss. Just, I mean, Slade didn't play. He didn't have turnovers. Jordan Love, quarterback now, taking over Andrew Luck for the Colts. He had a strong game. Definitely had a strong game. We didn't get any sacks, any turnovers. Defense didn't show up. Offense didn't show up. You know, you, you would have hoped a team with this winning pedigree so far 
would have shown up, but now we're here. Let's get into year five. Year five, I mean, this is always where we can spend our money. We don't have a whole lot, so I'm just going to go all in. We need a replacement for Jarrell Casey on the defensive line, and I think Rashawn Gary would be a perfect fit for this front three. And in our final draft, you know, just trying to you know, flex more so. Don't need any stars. So we got Philip Long running back at a K-State 74 hidden dev. Uh, for a guy that's 230, 92 speed, 93 accelerate. This guy looks really, really good. Uh, we got Josh Cruz in the second round, 69 hidden dev. Third round, just going back to the best PA, BPA. Nah, Cole from Iowa, 69 hidden dev. We got a 62 wide receiver, 69 tackle, 67 tackle. That I just pretty much sim that pickup. But uh, hey, nice draft. Year five. Year five. Thank God it's not a Super Bowl or a bust, but it's the uh, first time that Ryan Tannehill is not a member of this squad. We're going Slade. Camo just has a star dev. Still looks really good. 85 overall. A uh, AJ Brown, 95. We got a 93 there in Corey Davis. Derek Henry's probably been the only surprising guy for the for like the negative side of things. I thought he would be sure be like 94, 95 at this point. Offensive line is solid across. The, you, you probably got, what, an 80, 83, 82, 83 average overall. Uh, John o. Smith, 91 superstar, tight end. Defense, we're at 89 overall. Uh, front three, uh, we got Mr. Rashawn Gary, which we need to move up there. Oh, we signed in free agency. Secondary looks pretty good. Awuja, 91. Dory Jackson, 92. Fulton, 85. Kevin Byard's 94. Landry's a 91. Rashawn Evans is a 94. Great development out of DeAndre Walker and Jayon Brown. How did Jayon... Jayon Brown got like three awards last year and did not go up in dev trait. He got linebacker of the year, defensive player of the year, and he's still stuck on normal. Like, I get you got to get certain numbers and tackles, but come on. Oh, look at that. LB of the year, defensive player of the year, and he got hit with regression. That's all he won. He won regression. Uh, but here, you're five. I'd love to, you know, have another opportunity to play with this team, control this team in another Super Bowl. So let's do the hard work during the regular season so that when we get to the offseason, it's going to be light work. And what a way to end it, huh? Not even sniffing the playoffs. 5 and 11, I was 1 and 7 at the midway point. I was just like, ah, screw this. 5 and 11 is a lot better. Still, you know what? It's because we didn't have Tannehill. We're a 91 overall. Our team's as good as it's ever been, but we missed that. That The missing link is Tannehill. It's not Slade. An 88 overall quarterback, rookie, promising with 98 throw power. That's not what you need. What you need is I needed like a 73 superstar QB. We'd have more success. So that's how we're going to have to finish this one. I mean, we saw... You know, elite development here out of the wide receivers, out of the skill position players in general. We won the Super Bowl. It's still a successful rebuild. Just, I just hate, especially having your worst year of the entire rebuild in the final year. I mean, look at that. Slade had a lot of yards, not a lot of touchdowns. Derrick Henry, for he's just awful. He did not work out well. A.J. Brown, unreal. Simply unreal. Thousand yards every year he's been in the league. He's averaged, let's see there. I would say he's averaged 1,100 yards and 10 touchdowns every year since he's been in the league. Like, that's scary numbers. Scary production. Um, defensively, Jayon Brown's been another really good one. Both these linebackers played well. Twyman, nine sacks. Byard's been good. Adore Jackson's been good. Really good in Adore Jackson. He's getting two, three, four, five interceptions every single year. But, uh, yeah, the 29th ranked offense is not going to put you where you want to be in the fifth. Like, look, we're bottom tier in everything. Like, Mike Vrabel's probably getting fired. Especially, it even stings more knowing that 8-8 eight and eight is what won the AFC South. We only have one AFC South title. Everything was up for grabs, and this team collapsed. Like, is Tannehill still in, this le still in the league here? I wonder. I wonder, Mr. Tannehill. He is with the 49ers. Did he even play? Since Ryan Tannehill left us. 41, 32. He didn't even play. But, I mean, that's not bad. Four years with Tannehill as our starter. He started as the starter. Average 70% completion percentage. 40, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120, 130. 130 touchdowns to under 40 picks. I mean, that is, that's one of the more polarizing things I've ever seen. So... Overall, successful rebuild here for the Tennessee Titans. Way better. 100% way better than what my expectations were set when I was like, you know what? Let's do a Titans-Tannehill rebuild. 
So that's good. I uh, hope you guys did enjoy it. As always, I'm always looking through the comment section below to see what team we should rebuild next week. Let me know if you have an idea as well for the other rebuild series that we do. The spin the wheel rebuild. Feel free to leave a comment there. Hope you guys did enjoy. I'm going to go back to watching North Dakota State play in the FCS playoff because that's what I do. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll catch you later. Peace out. Numbers going down, but I still stay consistent. Doubt come around, but I still don't listen. Do I need a new sound or a new vision? Perhaps it's time I make that decision. I don't want to think about nothing. I just want to stay doing something.